Bienvenue. Welcome, everyone. My name is Renee Ketchum, and I am in charge of cultural offerings for the AFUSA. Bienvenue for our Valentine's Day macaron with Chef Alain Le Nôtre. Thank you for receiving me. Slide. So just, just in the interim, we'd like to just make sure that everyone listening takes a quick look at our national events coming soon. I don't need to talk about them. They're in right on the AFUSA.org website, but please check daily to see what wonderful events we have that are free to all Alliance Francaise chapters and AETF members. Next slide, Melissa. Speaking French, as we know, can improve your cultural experience and just improve your life. So we always say learn French, live French, and love French. As we remind everyone, there are a few logistics every time we do this. So please stay on mute during the presentation. That's especially important because we have a huge group today. Stay on speaker view. Please make sure that your questions are in the chat. And um, if for any reason there are any technical issues, please just sign off and re-sign in. The event is being recorded. Um, so everyone who has signed up for the event will be able to um, see it on YouTube and will receive another link. And we should be an hour in terms of runtime. So welcome again, Chef Alain Le Nôtre. Chef Le Nôtre is the third generation chef of the Le Nôtre famille founder of the Culinary Institute Le Notre in Houston, Texas, which is ranked number one in the culinary art colleges in the US for the past three years, the past three years in a row by niche.com. In 2021, Le Notre contributed to the English translation and republishing of Faites votre pâtisserie comme Le Notre in English, French pastries and desserts by Le Notre. And now we have a video that we'd like to show you before we start the cooking part of the presentation. Thank you, Melissa. At Culinary Institute Lenault, we create. We create a higher level of excellence. Unstoppable potential. We create innovation built on tradition. Opportunity at every step. We create environments for our students to succeed, to live out their dreams. Born of a legacy of excellence. We are creating the culinary masters of tomorrow. See what you create at the Culinary Institute Le Nôtre. I joined uh, Le Nôtre so I can perfection some techniques and learn from the best. It's really exciting to learn from chefs that give you every single ounce of knowledge that they have. I've been doing this for a long time. Just show them, you know, the way it's going to be in the industry. They truly care about each and every student. He's gonna hold me to his standard. That actually helped me later in life. I love being able to come to school every day knowing that I'll be challenged in an actual kitchen environment. I was able to gain so much knowledge, technique, and skill. It really helped me and helped me grow as a chef. Quality training gets you excellent chefs. Actually, uh, a lot of my dreams have already come true, thanks to Culinary Institute Lenote. The number one in America. So here we are, I have a few, um, I have the luxury of being able to ask Chef Le Notre a few questions before we go to the actual recipe. So Chef Le Notre, why is Faites Votre Pâtisserie Comme Le Notre called a cult book? It's called a cult book because it did not age. After 45 years of its creation by my sweet sister, Sylvie, and my father, Gaston, my late father, it was 
translated in six languages, including Japanese, and printed at more than 250. And revered by the professional and the amateur alike all over the world. Can you talk a little bit about your father's legacy and his approach to cuisine? Well, I was thinking about that question eventually. Actually, it, it started for me very early. I was six years old uh, my, my, in, in our little uh, family kitchen because uh, in Normandy, the lab was too small. So the family kitchen was part of the lab for the Christmas period. Uh, my father set, set me on two telephone books and he was dipping uh, in front of me palais d'or, ganache, uh, manually, obviously. And uh, I had, uh, it was putting the each palais d'or in front of me. And I had to put a, a little square of plexiglass with a champagne uh, cork, press on it and let it dry. And when it was dry, we removed the plexiglass and the palais d'or was shiny. So that was <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> and my father was a perfectionist. Um, he always said to our staff and everybody, when asked, why, why are we using that ingredient and not that one that is less expensive? Say, no, no. You have to please 5% of the most demanding of your customer to please all of them. And nothing is good enough. You always added quite often, the customer is always right, especially when he's wrong. That's always we've heard that many times. How did your how did your father shape your approach to baking, pastry, and cuisine? Despite of of his Zealand legendary name, uh, he had a lot of humility, and he, he always looked to continue learning and um, experimenting, testing was a pleasure for him, but also a duty. And finally, before we get to see the next video and, and, a, and a picture of this book that hopefully everyone's gonna purchase, how, how do your father's traditions live on at the Culinary Institute Le Nôtre? Well, uh, education was his obsession. It's the reason why uh, when I came with the idea of creating the first culinary art school in France in 1971, he immediately said, okay, there was no business plan, there was no budget. <laughs> said, okay, but you take care of it. <laughs> so that was really how it started. And at that time, we did not imagine creating this type of culinary art school in the US and be the ambassadors that came later. So thank you for your question. So, so before, we, before we get to the actual recipe, I wanna make sure that everybody understands that they should have received a recipe. And if you haven't, it's in the chat. And Melissa is going to pull up a picture of the book, French Pastries and Desserts by Le Notre, which you can see on your screen here. And we'll bring it up again at the end so that people can order a, an autographed copy um, by Chef Le Notre. So Melissa, I think we're ready um, to begin the, 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 pre the, sec the second video, if we're ready. Here are the ingredients for your Valentine's Day macaron and the tips from Alain Le Nôtre. The recipe is page 407 of French pastry dessert by Le Nôtre. Powder sugar, almond powder, egg white, granulated sugar, chef rubber color for macaron, 
read the current jelly from the lab studio of the Culinary Institute Le Nôtre. The food coloring that we are using in the pastry department at the Culinary Institute Le Nôtre come from Chef Ruber. It's made in the US. And you have a choice for this recipe between three of them. The first one is Chef Ruber color for macaron, specially designed for macaron. This one is red. If you don't find this one with them, at chefruber.com. Look for the emulsion gel. And you have a third solution, the airbrush color. Before we get started, we are going to need a food processor, a mixer and whisk, a sifter, pastry bags, small round tip, parchment paper, sheet pan, a bowl, and obviously an oven. If you are tight on your budget, instead of purchasing a KitchenAid, which is a great tool, purchase this hand mixer. You will find it less than $30 in many places. So good luck on your equipment. Before starting the recipe, don't forget to preheat your oven at 340 degrees Fahrenheit. White powder, sugar, and uh, almond have been grinded together, and now they need to be sifted. Easy, easy, easy. It's enough. The tip number one was about the food coloring. The tip number two, very important to memorize. You have to check carefully when you clarify your eggs that there is absolutely no egg yolk by accident in the egg white, or it will ruin your recipe. The tip number three is very important. Always wash your bowl and your whisk in the dishwashing machine to make sure there's no fat attached to it. And very important, verify that your mixer has no fat left from a previous production, for example, a dressing or a mayonnaise. So verify here, or you may not have a good recipe. Just an anecdote on that. The executive chef of the White House for 25 years had to serve one night souffle, Grand Marnier, for 250 people. And as you can imagine, the timing for a presidential dinner is very exact. So they started to, to whisk the egg white, and the chef came to see him and said, they are not right, they, 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 don't, they don't get volume. Maybe there was some egg yolk in it. So they trash them, they start another batch, and it was not right either. So they trash them. They started a third batch. But before starting the third batch, he went to check on his mixer and found out there were some debris of mayonnaise made homemade at the top that had fallen in the egg white and that trained the egg white. So it's only the third batch that they could have the co correct egg white for the meringue for 250 people at the White House. Even the, the best professional uh, can go into close to trouble. Souffle were perfect, but it, to the minute, one more minute and it would have been a catastrophe. All right, so we imagine that it was clean in the dishwashing machine. We check the equipment and now we are going to whip the egg white. I put the egg white in the bowl. The bowl is at maximum height. Slowly at the beginning. We have in front of us whipped egg white and granulated sugar. When the granulated sugar have been incorporated in the whipped egg white, it will become, guess what? You know the word, it's famous, a meringue. But it's not a meringue yet. So let's do the meringue.
You have the pick, and now we're adding the sugar. Et voilà, we have a meringue. Don't forget the color for macaron from Chef Rubber. For that quantity, too small quantity to measure, but I guess one third of a teaspoon. I'm going to scoop my bowl on the edge. I think we have the right density and right color. Meringue, it's going to be beautiful or very nice macaron. Before doing the batter, pastry chef are very particular. They verify that the right pick in their meringue. So let's verify that. The texture is very good. It's not liquidy at all. Normally, it should stick. Uh, yeah, it's thick. It's sticky. Uh. And Lorena, our alumni, is going to be my assistant from time to time. And she's going to pour the almond powder and the sugar into the batter gently. From more, more to the top, a little bit faster. And I'm turning my bowl and going up, down, up, down. You see the move? Great egg white. They must have been 24 hours in the cooler before we use them. More please. Stop, stop. I cut in the center and I turn the bowl. Turn in the center, lift and turn the bowl. Try to be homogeneous and the, the balance of it, great. So you see, we do that in three steps to have an even batter. I don't want to see any white, it's almost done. Et voilà, the batter is ready to go to the oven. Almost. To achieve nice, shiny macaron, you need to give a good folding. And now you have the right batter for shiny macaron. Lorena is drawing large heart because I suppose you will be interested in baking macarons for your loved one of any age, tiny one or big one. Thank you, Lorena. You're welcome. The next step is to turn the parchment in order for the crayon not to be transmitted to our macaron. Here you are. Now we're going to fill. We use that, the taller one will be better. You have your, your bag, your cone. It's a good average size, but you can have thinner or larger one. So I'm covering I'm right-handed, so I'm covering my left hand with a bag, like that. I'm going to pour the batter using my index. Don't fill the bag too much at the beginning, if you are a beginner. <laughs> I'm guiding with my left hand, pushing the bag with my right hand. I start with the outside of the macaron. This is one of the best part for my grandchildren for Christmas when we do macaron together. Et voilà, we have the large macaron on a different sheet pan than the small one. A good tip is to use a container when you are a beginner instead of your left hand. So you, you put the, the tips here and then inside and your bag inside the container and you fold the container, you fold the bag around the container. And 
the should work. Let's do the small one now. I have my bag in between my thumb and the other finger. And I push here and I direct here. Oop. Every other heart. Because they are going to expand in the oven and you don't want them to be too close to each other. This drawing beneath the paper is coming very handy. This is for the bottom of the heart. Now we do the top of the heart after the filling will have been added. Start from the top of the heart and go back to the bottom. Et voilà! Ready to go to the oven and to be tested tonight or better tomorrow. The recipe suggests to bake 10 to 12 minutes at 340 Fahrenheit. It could be different for a good baker, no is oven. The indication in the book is only an average. So learn carefully your oven and adapt your equipment. The secret to a moist macaron is that step. Coming from the oven, you pour a little bit of water under the baking sheet and you let it flow beneath the macaron gently. Don't put too much like I just did. <laughs> Don't put too much of it. And now your macaron will be moist. Look how, how, shine, how shiny they are. It's really a good recipe. Moist, thick. I'm excited. I would like to test one. And you, the filling. This one is red, red currant. But you can have chocolate, you can have mocha, praline. I'm chasing the, the air from my bag. Folding it gently. My left hand is here. Sorry, my, my right hand is here. Twisting, chasing the air, chasing the air, twisting, twisting. And I'm going to press a little and cut the extremity. Here we are. And the filling is here. Only at the center because if you put too much, it's going to, to go everywhere that everybody can do, even my grandchildren, when they don't get too excited. They want to eat the macaron before they are finished. I don't have to press. It will go gently down. Look how shiny they are. Some people say they are better the next day, but I'm afraid there will be not too many left tomorrow. Et voilà. Filling the giant macaron. Start from the center. Not too close to the edge. Just as a center. Voilà. And here we are, the giant macaron, my heart. Lorena is going to give you a love message on the big macaron. <laughs>
Let me just take a look here. Um, okay, one question we have from Meredith is what is the purpose of the water in the pan after they bake? Okay. I think Mr. Lenotre, uh, you are on mute. If you can unmute. Okay, okay. So you see, we are on direct. You see, I'm steady. <laughs> so the, the water is uh, uh, very important uh, uh, to separate uh, the baking sheet from the pan. And uh, the humidity uh, communicated to the baking sheet uh, make it easier to remove the macaron from the paper. Mm -hmm and make it even a little bit moister. So it's an important step. So this is a really interesting question, Chef Lenotre, and I would have the same question. This is from um, Wendy Perry. Um, did I hear Monsieur Lenotre say to age the, egg, age the egg whites in the fridge for 24 hours before beating them? Meaning should they be cold or should they be warm? Because most of us assume that the egg whites should be at room temperature. It's not a question of temperature. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. It's not a question of temperature. It's a question of aging. They will whip better if they are 24 hours or maybe 36 hours um, old out of the shell. Okay, so, so, that, so in other words, if you're buying fresh eggs, make sure that they're 24 hours in the refrigerator. Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. No, I'm sorry, no, no. Almost. <laughs> you, you clarify them, you remove the yolk, and you reserve the white for 24 hours in the refrigerator. Okay. Or so more. the egg whites, once you've removed, once you've separated them, the egg whites should be covered in a separate clean container with nothing else, no oils, whatever, no in the oil. refrigerator for 24 no hours. Oil. <laughs> so so again just to follow up with that question so once they've sat by themselves in the refrigerator should they come to room temperature or does it or should they just be it's, beat? Not, it's not very important it's not important okay because i think a lot of people automatically assume that egg whites should be room temperature all right next um should the macarons this is from Anne margaret white should the macarons sit after being piped and before baking should no. they rest no, no, they don't need to sit. No, no. <laughs> and, and, and at that time, it's, it's very soft, obviously. So don't, don't do like my uh, grandchildren. They like to, to tap, tap, tap on the, on, the, on the, and then that reduce the volume. Go straight from the bag to the oven with a minimum of moving. Okay. So again, we have another question from Karen Karjas. Um, if you were using a sill plat, you know, the silicone, because I know I have one too that has the little squares for macaron, um, do you still pour water under it? <laughs> Not <laughs> a good <laughs> question, but, but no. If you have silicone, uh, it will not uh, improve the, um, the, the macaron by, by pouring water, no. So to, to follow up on that, would you is, do you think that people creating this recipe would do, would be better off just using the parchment as you showed us versus using the silicone? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Bonnet. Okay. And remembering to turn it over so you don't get the the, the pencil on the. Uh -huh. um, yeah. All right. Hang on. What else do we have? So should they sit? Um, what is from Michelle Bissier? What is the red coloring made of? Are they natural? Is it a natural ingredient? Are there only natural ingredients in the food coloring? I trust so much uh, <laughs> Chef Weber that I didn't ask him. The only thing I asked him is, is it made in the USA? He said, yes, it's also is good coming from you. All right, let's see. Um, let me see if there are any other questions. Oh, here's another one. Um, 
um, from Tracy Maddox. Um, what, what are the adjustments that one should do for high altitude cooking, temperature or time of cooking? But it's, it's a tricky one. Um, you have to increase, increase your temperature on, on, on the oven to achieve the same temperature. Mm -hmm. Um, so here's um, here's something else. I think you've already answered it, but what do you mean by clarifying the whites? It's uh, breaking the, the egg carefully. Uh, you don't want any shell uh, left in it, and separating the egg from from the white. Yeah, that that's that the, seems the, the, the yellow part from the white. And then making sure again, and I think I think that we, what what you had that you noted that you have to make sure that there is no oil or anything on your mixer mm -hmm. and that you need to dishwash. You put, put your everything in the dishwasher to make sure yeah. that the egg whites beat up. Otherwise you're going to be like that poor White House chef. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was Melissa, a French chef, by the way. <laughs> Pardon? He was a French chef, uh, 25 years, uh, executive pastry chef at the White House. Well, I guess it was lucky he had all enough eggs at the White House <laughs> to be able to do it three times. Yeah, Monday was the problem, no problem. So Melissa, do you see any other questions in the chat? Uh, yes, we um, have Wendy who's asking again for the name of the food coloring. What, uh, can you repeat the question please? Sure, what is the name of the food coloring? Macaron food coloring from chefruber.com. Okay. They have a plant in, in Texas and one in California, I think. Yeah. So here's another one, Chef Lenotre. What causes, this is from somebody who obviously has already made macaron. What causes my macaron shell to bake with too much volume and air in the center? It never happened to me. <laughs> Never happened. I, 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 I think this is a, the lack of um, experience. <laughs> you have to do it more often, <laughs> and you will figure, figure out. <laughs> and then from Harry Leitzel, um, can you use uh, can you use powdered egg whites? I'm almost embarrassed to ask that question to a chef of your oh, no, Can you no. use powdered egg whites? No, no, no. <laughs> no powdered egg whites. No, so Harry, skip that. <laughs> Real egg whites, 24 hours in the fridge. Yeah. Okay, After let's clarify. see. Uh, pardon? 24 hours in the fridge after clarifying. Exactly. Um, so, and I think you showed us this in the video, but we have Michelle asking, what consistency should the mixture be before piping? So I think you showed that us that you had to, it had to be, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. as to yeah. stick or. It, the thicker as possible. Yeah, I gave you a perfect example. Okay. Um, and what is the filling made of that you use, the, the black currant filling? I mean, it, it was black currants, wasn't it? Or currants? Yeah, black currant. The, the, the one, this one, uh, it, it's cherry, it's black currant cherry, but you can have a, a raspberry or strawberry or apricot or chocolate or praline or anything you want so is it is it a jelly or i mean where how do you create the the filling the black currant or do you oh do you yes, yes. It? it's on page 366 hmm? 366 Three? 366 366 we have the recipe in the book on 366 page 366 366 is the is the filling because it's 407 is the actual macaron, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you recommend a brand of almond powder? No, I, I don't. I don't recommend one. And this is a question, Chef Lenotre, that we get all the time when we do. I think some people need to have to be have some clarification on what the difference is between almond powder and almond flour. I will use only almond powder, not almond flour. 
it, it may be the same thing in, in the mind of uh, some uh, industrial uh, marketing company, but to be sure. To be sure it's ground almonds, because now with everybody being vegan yeah. and whatever, people are buying almond flour to use for a lot of things. But but so so to your point, we need the, the people need to buy almond powder. So yeah. it's I, not the same as almond flour. I wouldn't. OK, I will not take a chance. But excellent question, Renee. Yeah, no, but but I think everyone's using almond flour now. So almond powder, it's 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 confusing to to cooks. Um, I think Melissa, do we see anything else that I'm not seeing in the chat? Not not at the moment. Does anyone else have any other questions, or is there anything, Chef Le Notre, that you would like to add before we remind people how to buy the book and um, what page the recipes on? Um, yeah, I'm very interested in. I mean, I, I think the current is fabulous, but but I think you suggested that you could use a chocolate filling or a mocha filling. Um, are there recipes in the book for um, for for other fillings for this particular recipe? Oh yes, we have, we have a lot of um, recipes for fillings in the opera recipe, Two for eight. example. Okay. Uh, what page? Two o eight. Two o eight. Page two o eight. And then we just had somebody um, ask a question, and I think you've addressed it um, pretty clearly in your video, but just to remind people, what makes um, your macarons shiny? Because I think beginners, sometimes they're not as shiny as they would like. This is a, one of the tips, important step. You have to um, mix the batter uh, to add more air to the batter, uh, in the brisk uh, movement, rotation movement, like I'm showing in the film, and long enough that that add the shyness. So as you create the consistency, that over that, that motion that you use with your um, um, spatula, just that over and under until. Um, may, maybe, again, I think a lot of beginners, maybe we're not going to do it long enough. Can you give them any sense of time? Is it, you know, two or three minutes or, I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't, again, it, it, it looks right when it's right, but, but for people just starting, it's, it's, it's uh, I, I never chronometer okay. that step, uh, <laughs> maybe two minutes, maybe. But I think as in the video, it looked like it was ready when you when you basically it wasn't going to dribble out on the counter. It, it yeah. achieved the consistency and it started to look different as you as you mixed it more. We, we, um, the professional has said until you reach the ribbon uh, volume, like it's, it's formed like a ribbon. Yeah. All right. Then we have somebody saying, where do you buy almond powder? Um, and I guess, I, I don't know what, I, I mean, I think, I think it's, it's pretty easily found. I would oh, say yes. all, all the supermarkets, uh, decent one uh, of that. Yeah. But to your previous point, people watching this should be very careful that they're not buying almond flour. They should be, so almond powder would in effect be ground almonds versus. Versus, I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but all you want is ground almonds. You don't want anything else. Yes, don't take a chance. Yeah. Okay. Um, and is it easy to make your own ground almond powder? Can you just, could you? No, don't try. Okay. Okay. All righty. All righty. Here, one more. Um, could you whip the whites by hand instead of in the stand mixer? Oh, no, no. With, with a whisk. Yeah. No, no, no. You, you, you use a hand mixer or the, the standing mixer, but no, don't do it by hand, no. Okay. It's too tiring. It's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, well, $30 hand <laughs> mixer. Yeah. yeah, you're better off spending the money on a hand mixer than standing there doing it by yeah, yourself. And you especially can. if you haven't put the whisk in the dishwasher, that yeah. could really be a risk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another question, can you use macaron, Marcona almond powder? Marcona. I don't know. If Marcona. 
Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it's uh, the answer of a Norman that I was born in Normandy. So, so basically, it's got just got to be good almond powder. And then we again, people are hoping that you're going to say yes. This is the second time we've had this question. Can you use powdered egg whites? And and you have said no. That's not. That, that, that was the. Uh, <laughs> That was it. <laughs> but the other Not one, an you have to make a research. <laughs> I may give you the answer uh, with the next recipe. Okay. So, but you recommend that people not waste their time and try it. Let's just. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all righty, Melissa. I think I think do, I don't see any more questions. Oh, here we go. Here's one that this is an interesting one. Is there any reason why you skip? You do not use cream of tartar. Cream of tartar for a meringue. Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's right up there with the with the with the with the with the powdered egg whites. So. No, 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 everything uh, natural. Yeah. Okay, we have more questions coming. Do you recommend a flavoring, for instance, if you are going to make pistachio-flavored macaron? Not, no, I don't recommend flavoring at all. You find a nice uh, ingredients. Uh, you don't need concentrate or you don't need. Okay. Nice, uh, nice jelly or nice jam. Or... So I think we still have some confusion looking at the chat on what you mean by 24, the 24 hours in the refrigerator. So we have, we have, what if you buy <laughs> eggs in the grocery store and you don't know how old they are? So, I, <laughs> so maybe if you could explain again about the fact that once you separate them, then the separated product, the result needs to be in the, in the, yeah. Absolutely. Once you separate the egg yolk from the egg white, uh, reserve the egg white in a closed container for at approximately 26, 24 hours in the, in the cooler. And I saw that you used a glass, or I'm assuming from what you had there, you used a glass container. Could you use a metal container or plastic at the, or should it be just glass and covered in saran wrap in the refrigerator for 24 hours? Now we use glass because of the movie. It's easier for you to see. <laughs> <laughs> Could be in any, any container. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, all right. So here's one. Um, um, if the egg white is too wet, it won't rise properly with the crusty feet at the bottom. I don't understand what that means. Oh, I see. All right. So that. That's somebody making a comment that that basically if it's too wet, if it's if it doesn't stick, I guess. Um, well, anybody, I think everyone is thrilled. I think everybody knows that powdered egg whites are out. Cream of tartar is not necessary. And I hope everybody understands the 24 hours in the fridge. <laughs> you may you, you may be getting a lot of emails. Um, everybody, we have so many people, Chef Le Notre, who are saying thank you. Um, oh, one last one. If you don't want to color your macaron, yeah. can you add vanilla for flavor? Definitely. Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think um, I think I don't see any more questions. Just lots of merci infiniment, fantastique, merci, merci, chef. Um, superb. Thank you for the great presentation. So I think we're ready, um, Michelle, oh, no, Melissa, if to, to put the slide up for the book one more time. So I think um, if everybody, here is the copy of the book. And, and as Chef Le Notre said, and as I said in the beginning, if you buy the, 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 the book directly from um, the, the Culinary Institute Le Nôtre. It will be dédié to you, to you. It will be assigned an autograph by Chef Alain Le Nôtre. And um, everybody should remember that page 407 is the recipe for the macaron and um, some of the fillings are on page 366. But I hope everybody will order it directly to have a signed copy. And um, unless there are any other questions, I think that I think that maybe Melissa could open up this, this, the, 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 
the screen so that everybody can give Chef Le Notre uh, some applause. Um, this has been amazing. And I think everybody is going to be in the kitchen this weekend making macaron. So thank you, Chef Le Notre. And Melissa, can you open it up so people can thank you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you so much, Chef Le Notre, and we'll all try and get the egg white part correct. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so, de bon après-midi à tout le monde, and let's all hurry up and buy our books so we can get started. Okay. Mm -hmm. Merci à toi.